Hello family, we thank the Lord for today. We thank him for all he's done for us and all he's yet to do. Today, as we carry on with the topic or theme, how do we know we have the presence of Jesus today? My focus is on kindness. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. In the last few episodes over the last um, two weeks or so, we've looked at love, joy, peace, patience, and today we will be considering kindness. For the benefit of just laying a bit of foundation for what I will be sharing today, I thought I will check up the dictionary to see what it describes kindness as. It is described as the quality of being friendly, generous, and considerate. And as I thought about that word, it also reminded me of a phrase in the Bible that many of us are familiar with. And it describes God, or it talks of God's loving kindness. God's loving kindness. So again, I thought, let me check up the encyclopedia of the Bible and see what it says regarding loving kindness. Because often when we're talking in our day to day, we do not normally use loving and kindness together. But in the Bible, we find that. And the encyclopedia of the Bible says, loving kindness is goodness, kindness Usually, it relates to mercy, compassion, pity, also love for mankind, loving, kindness of God, kindness originating in personal attachment, tender and benevolent affection, especially the loving care of the creator for his rational creatures, creatures rather. Originally, loving kindness was two words. The combination was coined by Coverdale which helps us to have some context as to why we come across the phrase loving kindness in in scripture. But even then, the encyclopedia of the Bible also actually indicates that that phrase is normally seen in the King James Version. But why is it that the Spirit of God will want us to be those who exhibit kindness? I came across this passage of scripture in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, where we're instructed, and it says this, Be kind and helpful to one another, tender-hearted, compassionate, understanding, forgiving one another readily and freely, just as God in Christ also forgave you. So this is a command. It is not something that we've been told to determine whether we want to do it or not. That as believers, we have been called to be kind and to be helpful, to be forgiving. But I believe that it will be difficult to be forgiven of others if you're not kind. The other reason why we are called to be kind or the Holy Spirit enables us to demonstrate kindness is found in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 17. It says, when you're kind to others, you help yourself. When you're cruel to others, you hurt yourself. And this is the message version of the Bible. We know that as believers, God's first command is that we are to love him with all of our hearts, with all of our soul and everything within us, and we are to love our neighbors as ourselves. Now, in order for you to be able to love somebody, you would naturally have to also be someone who demonstrates kindness. And the reason why I know this is because 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 says, Love is patient and kind. 
never jealous or envious, never boastful or proud. And so we see here that the word patience and kind is used to demonstrate what love should look like. That if you're walking in love, you're supposed to be patient and you're supposed to be kind. It is therefore not a surprise, and I've seen it for the very first time, that when the Bible then lists the various aspects or elements of the fruit of the Spirit, kindness is followed or preceded rather by patience. In other words, you cannot be a patient person or the absence of patience if you're kind means that you do not you're, you may not be able to walk in the love that God wants you and I to have. Equally, if I am kind, I will demonstrate patience. And as I think of that, I think of when you're dealing with a child and maybe you're training that child or asking that child to do a particular thing. You've said that to them over and over again, and they keep doing the opposite of what you've been telling them to do. But you love this child. And because you love this child, you may restrain yourself from getting angry. You may restrain yourself from maybe um, punishing them because that love causes you to be able to show them patience and to be forbearing so that you know that this child is not getting it as quickly as you want them to. But patience helps you to restrain yourself from doing something that perhaps you would regret later. But in that, is that you also should demonstrate kindness. And so God is saying to you and I, that we are to walk or enable the Spirit of God to work in us, so that we can exhibit kindness because we cannot love without patience and patience and without kindness. And because in all that we do, while we're trying to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, God is also watching us every day to ensure or to observe if we are walking in his ways. And we know that Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit or promise that the Holy Spirit will come to us, not only to reveal and to remind us of what he had said and to help us know how we're to walk with God, but to help us to become who God has called us to be. So all these different traits, such as kindness, it is also a a trait of God because God is three in one. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Therefore, whatever we see in the fruit of the Spirit, it is the character of God. So when you read Romans eleven twenty to 22, it says this, Granted, but they were broken off because of unbelief, and you stand by faith. Do not be arrogant, but tremble. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. Verse 22 says, Consider therefore, the kindness and sternness of God, sternness to those who fail, but kindness to you, provided that you continue in his kindness, otherwise you will be cut off. So it's again telling us here that God is a God who shows us kindness. Just as when I shared in the last episode and we're talking about patience and I mentioned that God is patient with us and in fact the Bible tells us that God is patient with us it is because of that that he doesn't consume people he doesn't go about you know um, kind of causing people to fall down dead and so on though they are living in sin because of his patience and in that he also demonstrates kindness and so today I just really want to encourage you that let us really daily evaluate our lives and ask ourselves, are we seeing kindness in action, in our attitude towards people, in our attitude, whether it's towards our friends, whether it's towards strangers, whether it's towards people, we do not know. Do we demonstrate kindness? And if we do demonstrate kindness, then praise God. But if we find that maybe we're not being as kind as perhaps you're convicted by the Spirit of God to do, then I would encourage you to avail yourself 
and to also ask the Spirit of God to help you in that area. But there's another interesting passage of scripture that I want to share with you. That gives us the indication that kindness is not something that is just a given, but it is a conscious decision we need to make that we would be those who are kind. Colossians 3, 12 says, So as God's own chosen people who are holy, set apart, sanctified for his purpose and well-beloved by God himself, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience, which has the power to endure whatever injustice or unpleasantness comes with good temper. Here we see that God is saying we cannot just take a blasé attitude and say, well, if I'm kind, I'm kind. If I'm not, I'm not. No, it says we are to put on. And it's interesting that we see in the same scripture, it mentions patience. So I pray that the Spirit of God would enable us. Heavenly Father, by your grace, to adhere to your word. You've already taught us what the different elements of the fruit of the Spirit is or characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit. But we want to be more like you, Jesus. So even as today we've been reminded of what kindness is, of how you yourself, God Almighty, are kind towards us and how we've been reminded that kindness and patience is an attribute of love. Help us, Lord, to be those who put on that heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And where we fall short, enable us by your spirit, Father God, to receive that strength that we need, that knowledge and understanding we need, so that God, we will be kind. And that spirit of kindness, Father, will be evident to everyone who comes in contact with us. We continue to pray that you will show us mercy in everything and area of our lives, Lord. Let not us, O oh God, suffer judgment. Let us not suffer harm. Let us not, no evil befall us because of your mercy, Lord. Fight for us. Defend us on every side, O oh God, and keep us from all evil. Our loved ones, our families, our friends, O oh God. And just show us, Lord, your mercy and help us to be also those who show others mercy. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. We're now going to go over our memory verse. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8, Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. We're personalizing it by saying, Love never fails, therefore I pursue love. The Lord bless you, and I look forward to sharing with you next week, Monday. Be blessed. Amen.